Amen. Are y'all warm in here? <laughs> huh? That's the good thing out there. Amen. We thank God. We are preaching time now. is one of my favorite preachers. I just love to hear her expound and uh, exegesis the word. Amen. Because you know, it's real. And the devil is a liar. Amen. It seems like if he don't try to attack her before she preach, he try to hit her after she preach. But the one thing we have to remember, uh, Daddy Coleman, is that Satan is the accuser of the brothers. Amen. And sometimes he will come to try to hinder you and uh, ask God to minister Brooks one for nothing. Amen. But he's a liar. See, when, 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 that, when the devil says it's true, you have to say it's a lie. When he says it's a lie, you have to say it's the truth because he is your opposer. But I just want him to know we're going to tear his kingdom down because the Lord is going to allow her to preach up in here, up in here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's receive her by raising our right hands. Repeat after me, Minister Brooks. Minister Brooks. The devil, the devil is, a is a liar. He's under our feet. Under our feet. We, need we need a word. Minister Brooks, Minister Brooks. Preach, the word. preach the word. In season, In season. and out of season. season. It may hurt, it may hurt. But, I I, but I can say I preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. And you know my heart, yeah. And you know my heart. Everybody stand. I do. I have 
so many struggles. <laughs> and a lot of times people look at me and don't think so. But I am a woman. And I'm fragile. <laughs> and a lot of people, you know, look at it as me being so strong and so tough. But the enemy attacks me in so many ways. And as he said, sometimes, every time, not sometimes, every time I get ready to do something for God, he always throws something at me to try to stop me. But I promised the Lord that if you needed somebody, send me. And I would go. Because I believe that God wants me here. And that God has a calling on my life. And the enemy cannot stop him. He cannot stop him. He might slow me down a little bit, but he cannot stop me. Uh, with that being said, we're going to look into... And I also want to recognize my my brother, Minister Reverend Lee Barnes. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna step out of faith and say his fiance, Chantel. And to all of these mothers, deacons, ministers of music, uh, and, and and my church family. I thank God for you all so much more than you will ever know. Um, our Bible scripture is going to be coming from Genesis, the 38th chapter. The 38th chapter. Can you all stand in reverence for the reading of the word? Uh, this is. Uh, I, I don't like to say a familiar passage of scripture because it ain't familiar to everybody. Amen. Uh, but Genesis, the 38th chapter, and just a few scripture. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Amdalite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he found her not. When, she, when he asked the men of the palace saying, where is the harlot that was open openly by the wayside? And he said, there was no harlot in that place. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of that place said that there was no harlot in that place. And Judah said, let her take it to, let's take it to her. Least she be scammed. Behold, I sent this kid and thou hast found her. And it came to pass about the months after that it was told to Judah saying, Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, has played the harlot and has also, behold, she is with child, wear them, and Judah, bring her forth and let her be burnt. I'm just going to stop right there. And I want to take for a thought. Can any good thing come from a bad decision. All right, all right, all right. Can any good thing, you may be seated, come out of a bad decision? In our text, uh, this, I like to say, heroic act um, that this woman uh, committed, um, Tara was married twice in the beginning of the text. And God took 
both of her husbands. He killed them. She had to find herself in a very difficult place where she had to make some choices, Pastor, not Pastor Barnes, Pastor Nash. She had to make some choices because she was a widow at that point. And according to uh, the Leviticus law, um, she had to make a choice to either marry another one of the brothers um, that she was attached to. And because it was the law, or either you had to go back uh, to the father of the sons and get his approval uh, to marry somebody else. And she made a decision because she was between a rock and a hard place. And sometimes when you are under pressure, you make some bad decisions. You make some bad decisions and it, it just, you know, it don't look like, but uh, it's somewhat what is called premeditated uh, crime. <laughs> you had time to think about it. You had time uh, uh, to, to look at uh, the outcome and what was going to happen if you made this decision. Amen. Yeah. And, and she said, you know, um, I'm, go I'm childless. And, you know, back then women were worthless if they was childless. If they didn't have kids, uh, they wasn't worth anything. So, um, she was contemplating how she was going to make something happen. Is there anybody in here today that is in between a rock and a hard place trying uh, to make a decision uh, with your life? And I'm talking about the decision is a life-changing decision. It, it's just not no uh, hit or miss, but you got to be spot on when you make this decision uh, because this decision can interrupt your life. And uh, she was she was looking at uh, the, the 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 laws and she was looking at the critics and you know um, like most of us we think more about what people think about us than we do about the God that we serve. And, you know, most times uh, we want to call it our business, Pastor Nash. We want to uh, keep it inside. We don't want to um, tell nobody uh, because if we're afraid that if we consult with somebody else, they might tell us the truth. They might tell us that you should not do that uh, because of this, that, or the other. But sometimes uh, you might have to make a decision and, and it seemed like, uh, you know, as the scripture said, it's a way that seemeth right. And, uh, but the end of that way is destruction. And, and, and because you can find rest in the multitudes of counsel and, and you really don't want nobody uh, to tell you what to do because you already know what you're doing is wrong. That's the other reason why you really don't want to tell nobody and you call it your business. But this woman, and, and I, I would say that, you know, uh, you make bad decisions as well, Perry, uh, when you're experiencing loss. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because she, mind you, had lost two husbands, not one, but two. And because of that, um, she was concerned about how her life was going to be after this and uh, what is going to happen now. And that's how most of us is um, because we concerned and we try to, to do things to get ahead of God and, 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 and to cut God off and, and make the decision for ourselves. But I, I want to share with you that the decision she was making was very questionable uh, concerning her future. And, and, and that's how decisions is. When you're making a decision, you need to think about your future. Is this going to affect 
helped me down the line? Is it something that is going to affect my children down the line? Uh, if I make a choice like this, I'm going to have to explain this one day uh, to somebody. It might be your child um, that you have to explain to about why you made the decision uh, to keep them from their daddy. Or why did he not come around? What happened? How did we get here? Because the question is going to be asked one day uh, because of the decisions that we make, uh, the choices that we choose. Uh, she said, I am going to take a chance. She said, I'm going to uh, take a risk for my life. Uh, for myself uh, and she decided um, that she would go uh, to her husband's father which was her father-in-law sister Debbie and have and portray herself as a prostitute oh I wish I had a witness up in here uh, because sometimes uh, you she had to she had to hide herself that was the number one um, uh, concern or red flag that went up that she was making a bad decision, Pastor Nash, uh, because she had to hide herself. Uh, um, she, you know, and that's how it is in relationships, y'all. Uh, we really don't be who we really is. Uh, we put on masks and we hide behind uh, the Bible. I gotta say the Bible. Uh, we hide behind the Bible and act like we got it all together. But I like 
you that they was calling him. They'll tell you you was the one paying for the flights. And they don't tell you that you was uh, spending all your money uh, to be with him. No, but they want to bust him out. And they want to tell everything that he did and who he is and who he ain't. You can't trust that. And you have to give people a chance. Because God gave you a chance. And you got to forgive. Forgiveness is not an option. It's a commandment. And most times we want to hold people hostage to their past. Every time they do something, we say, here they go again. But you can't do that. You got to do like God do. You got to wake them up every day to bring new mercies. You got to forgive them. You ain't got to forget, but you got to forgive them. See, because that's the cliche for today. Is I can forgive, but I can't forget. But I want to tell you something, Sister Debbie. I, I know that it was very painful when I had a child. But after he was born, was gone. Yeah, yeah. When I looked in his face, I forgot about the pain that was caused. Yeah, yeah. And that's how it is with forgetting. And a lot of us is operating in hurt. We operating in hurt. We, we, we get in other relationships, but we hurt. We, we, we don't want to do like on a 12-step do. We don't want to admit that I'm hurt. But you want to put a band-aid on something that needs stitches. <laughs> you know what they say, Sister Debbie, you, you, if you lose one, you replace them. That ain't gonna help. Because he gonna hate you too. And he get what he want. The king, Judah, he admitted that's the first step to getting healed. It's taking responsibility for the bad decisions that we make, Pastor. And I ain't telling you to tell Facebook your business, but I'm telling you to find you a sister, a brother, somebody you can confess your faults to. Because the Bible says confess your faults one to another and you will be healed. Your healing is predicated on your confession. Admit what's going on with you. And you can get free. You can have peace when you make the next decision in your life. Because you know you did what you should do. I, 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 I didn't have a clue that this is what God, the way that God was going to take me. But I know that this woman was in a difficult situation. And as we all are in trying times, faced with different decisions that we need to make. But I urge you to get rid of your baggage. Get rid of your baggage before you can go into your future. Because your future is predicated on how you live right now. That's my message. Amen. Can I tell you that the devil is alive? I, 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 I just remember what Drew always said. Satan, I put you out. <laughs> Satan, I put you out.
in our hearts get fun. What good can come out of a bad decision? And I have made a lot of bad decisions. But at the end, I want to say I thank God for my journey. Amen. Sometimes the journey, what you went through, is better than the finished product. Amen. Because the journey helped to make it. I just love that word. We're going to get ready to go down from here. But come on, let's give the Lord another hand praise. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we thank you, we thank you. for how you, do how you do and what you're doing, what you're doing. In, this in this season, in us individually in us and collectively. And we ask you to be with us as we depart from this place, but never your presence. We thank you again for who you are. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Let us all say it together.